Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Colbert V2 model, which is basically a retrieval model for effective and efficient retrieval via lightweight late interaction. So let's try to understand the meaning of these words. Okay. So uh, let me first talk about uh, neural retrieval, single uh, vector retrieval, and multi vector dense retrieval. Right. So when somebody says dense retrieval, they basically mean using neural networks to do information retrieval. And neural information retrieval has become very popular, in, especially in the past two, three years. Uh, it has been popular for search, for knowledge intensive tasks like open domain question answering, multi hop claim verification, open ended generation, and so on. So typically, people do uh, dense retrieval uh, in uh, using single vector dense retrieval methods, which basically means you have a query, you have a document, you encode both the query and the document using the same encoder. Uh, uh, and in the query, you come up with one vector representation document. You come, with, come up with one vector representation. You do cosine similarity matches, and you return top k results. Right. However, more recently, people have started looking at multi-vector dense retrieval, uh, so as to essentially improve on the quality of the single vector dense retrieval methods. Okay. Now, these single vector and multi-vector dense retrieval methods, they are all called as late interaction kind of methods because. Uh, you know, the queries and the documents are encoded separately, and then you basically just compute cosine similarity at the end. Okay. Uh, some of these multi-vector dense retrieval methods include Colbert, uh, ME BERT, COIL, uh, UNICOIL, SPLAID, and SPLAID V2. Okay. Now, the way Colbert works is as follows. Why is it called multi-vector, right? So let's see why is it called multi-vector. Well, you basically take the question, you essentially take each of those tokens, come up with a representation for those tokens. Similarly, you basically take the passages or the documents, you take each of those tokens and come up with a representation for each of those tokens. So rather than coming up with one vector representation for the query and one vector representation for the passage, you actually have one vector representation per token of the query and per token of the passage of the document. Uh, next, the relevance between the query and the document or the question and the passage is computed using this function called as maxim. So it's basically uh, sum of and, and basically, of course, then sum over all the query, uh, all the query tokens. So, well, in other words, relevance is computed as sum of max similarity, maximum similarity between each query vector and all vectors in the document. So you take the query vector first one, right? You figure out the most similar query vector. Uh, most similar passage side or the document side vector. You do the same thing with the second one, third one. You basically add up all the three, and that's basically your overall score. Okay. So, so you know, uh, so in other words, you can actually write this maxim function or the score using maxim in 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 this form. Here, uh, you know, the query Q uh, Q basically is the matrix which basically encodes the query with n different vectors, uh, n different tokens, so n different vectors. D is the matrix which encodes a passage with m different vectors, m different tokens, so m different vectors. And then, as you see, here is a maxim being computed for every query vector qi. Okay, and then it's basically summed over all the query vectors qi, so as to get the overall score, relevance score between query and the document. Now, uh, you see, um, uh, I mean, uh, these multi-vector density level methods are very popular. However, multi-vector density level methods have this problem of large scale footprint compared to single vector models. So in single vector models, when you build a document side index, you actually index only one vector for every document. However, in multi vector methods, when you create the index, basically, uh, you know, you have to index one vector per token in those documents. So basically, if your documents have, uh, let's say, you know, 100 tokens, your index size sort of becomes like 100 X, right? So how does Colbert V2 solve this problem? So uh, we'll basically talk about how does Colbert V2 do the modeling and then indexing so as to basically compress, so as to create uh, almost 10x uh, smaller indexes compared to Colbert. Okay. So let's talk about how, do, how is the modeling done. Now to model, uh, you know, Colbert basically uses a bird based case, uncased, uh, uh, you know, encoder. So of course, for query side and passage side, you need an encoder. So uh, Colbert V2 uses bird based uncased. Uh, 12 layer, uh, you know, uh, uh, encoder. Okay. This encoder has been trained. So to train this encoder, you need labeled data. Well, in Colbert, they basically used a, a query positive document and negative document from MS Marco data set so as to train this model. Now, in Colbert V2, also they basically start with Colbert, in fact, and they essentially index training passages with Colbert V2 compression. So we'll talk about what is this Colbert V2 compression later, but they basically you know, at train time, they take all the training passages and uh, from MS Marco and they basically compute Colbert embeddings and they sort of store them in the index. Okay. 
And then the training for culprit V2 is basically done using distillation. So essentially distillation from a cross encoder setup. So cross encoder setup basically means, uh, you know, you do early interaction in the sense that uh, in this cross encoder model, you basically feed the query and the documents at the input itself. So you merge at the input in the string form itself. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how is this distillation performed. So for every training query, you basically retrieve top K passages from this culvert uh, training passage index. So you have an index, you basically retrieve the top K passages. You feed each query passage pair into a 22 million, a 22 million parameter mini LM cross encoder read anchor. Okay. So, so you see, you basically use a 22 million parameter mini LM uh, cross encoder uh, for re-ranking. Uh, and uh, um, essentially uh, the way you do this re-ranking is based on uh, the query, the positive document, and uh, you know 64 other negative documents um, uh, extracted from top 500 passages, uh, top 500 relevant passages, uh, you know returned by this uh, returned by the by the Colbert index. Okay, so that's that. So essentially, you know, you take a query, you essentially um, look up into the index, find like 500 uh, matching top K passages, and uh, you know you take the highest ranked one and call that positive. And then you randomly sample 64 negatives from those remaining uh, 499s. Okay. Now you pass this to the mini LM uh, read anchor, uh, and of course it re-ranks. So it basically gives you a scoring across these 64 different things plus the one uh, you know a positive document. And you take this distribution score distribution and you compute the scale divergence between this uh, cross encoder scores versus Colbert V2 scores. That's basically the soft loss, the soft distillation loss that you pass on from the mini LM V2, a mini LM um, cross encoder teacher uh, to the Colbert V2 uh, student. Now, of course, Colbert V2 also basically learns uh, using the hard loss from the labeled data itself, uh, in which case it uses in batch negatives. So in the same batch, you basically have multiple of these triples, Q, D plus, and D minus. Well, it basically uses D minus. Uh, it uses you know documents that are positive for other queries as D minus for the current query in the same batch. Okay. So that's basically how the training for Colbert V2 is done. Now, how about indexing? Well, so indexing is basically done by quantizing these embeddings in using uh, you know uh, using using some centroids. So essentially, in fact, let me first talk about how are these uh, embeddings represented, and then we'll basically look at indexing. Okay. So to represent the embeddings, well, you get the embeddings from the culprit, um, um, you know, encoder itself. However, these encodings are not stored as is. So uh, you can cluster those embeddings using k-means, and let's say you get like c centroids. So each of the vector v is actually then represented as a combination of the c centroid and a quantized residual vector. So essentially, you take the centroid vector, you take the vector v, you do the subtraction, and whatever residual vector you have, you basically quantize it down to one to two bits. So um, you know, um, um, Colbert uses uh, 128 dimensional vector representations. However, for every vector, rather than using, let's say, for every for every number in that vector, rather than using two bytes uh, or 16 bit representations, it basically uses the centroid uh, plus essentially the centroid plus one or two bits per number. Okay, So therefore, with n equal to 128, 128 numbers for every vector, Colbert requires 256 bytes because it basically uses two bytes per number at 16-bit precision, but Colbert V2 basically just requires 20 or 36 bytes. Um, how does that work? So basically, you can use four bytes for two raised to 32 centroids, which is large enough. Right? So essentially, you have lots of centroids there. Okay, And then you can actually use 16 or 32 bytes uh, if you use one bit or two bit uh, to encode the residual. So remember, you have to basically encode the centroid in four bytes and residual, uh, you know, in one or two bits per uh, per per number. So if you're using one bit, basically that's 128 bits for the number, uh, 128 uh, 128 bits for the vector, which basically is like eight, uh, uh, which basically is 16 bytes, right? Similarly, if you're using two bits, then it's basically, you know, uh, two into 128, um, you know, bits overall for the entire vector, which is 32 bytes. So overall, it's basically 4 plus 16 or 4 plus 32, which is 20 or 36 bytes. So as you can notice, rather than using 256 bytes representation that Colbert uses, Colbert V2 actually uses about a text, the smaller size representation at 20 bytes. Okay. So that's that. Now, what does indexing basically mean? So indexing actually involves three phases, centroid selection, passage encoding, and index inversion. So remember, you're basically not storing the entire long uh, uh, embeddings. You're basically storing uh, the cluster representation um, and the residual. Okay. So you know when computing these clusters, you basically uh, um, you know you you use k-means clustering, 
and the number of clusters is basically uh, the nearest power of two larger than 16 into square root of embedding size. So that's basically what they use. And uh, they use an embedding size of uh, 128 in that sense. Okay. Uh, they use k-means clustering over a sample of or only a sample of all the passages. They really don't use, uh, they don't perform k-means clustering over the entire data set. That would be too much. So they basically just uh, take a sample of all the passages, uh, square root of the total number of uh, co total collection size, and do k-means clustering on top of that. Passage encoding, so they take the passages, they pass through BERT, they compress the passages uh, to uh, by finding the nearest centroid and compute a quantized residual. Okay, that's what is basically stored in the index. Of course, the index also need, uh, there is also a index inversion that is done as a third pass. So for faster nearest neighbor lookup, uh, you know you group these embedding IDs that correspond to each cluster cluster centroid together. So you basically store all the embedding IDs that belong to the same cluster together. Um, you of course save this inverted index to disk as well. So um, we will see very quickly at retrieval time what happens. At retrieval time, when you basically get a query, you tokenize it, get the query, uh, uh, each of those query uh, uh, tokens. For the query token QI, you basically get one to four closest centroids by looking up this inverted index that you just put up into the index. Okay. Using this inverted list, you identify one to four centroids, and then you identify a uh, two raised to twelve to two raised to fourteen passage embeddings which are closest to the centroids. Okay. You decompress them by actually, of course, adding the residual vector also, and you compute their cosine similarity with every query vector. Okay, that basically gives you, uh, you know, um, so for each of those query vectors, you essentially have cosine, uh, you know, cosine similarity computed with some of the closest, uh, you know, passage token vectors. Now you compute the maxim per query vector. Of course, you cannot compute the accurate maxim because you don't really have. Uh, the entire uh, all of those you know document side tokens uh, um, cosine similarity compute for them. So you compute approximate maxim per QI by grouping scores uh, by the passage ID for each query vector. Okay, and then you max reduce scores corresponding to the same passage ID. Okay, so for the same passage ID, you uh, sort of max reduce. You put them together and you essentially add those um, maxim similarities all together. Okay. So these are basically lower bounds on the maxim per document for each query token, but then you sum these lower bounds across all those QIs so as to get the top scoring document candidates. Now these top scoring candidates are basically, uh, 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 you know, they go to the deranking phase where you load the complete set of embeddings for these passages. So all of those remaining tokens, which were basically not the closest ones to these QIs, but still have some similarity with these QIs, they're also loaded, and then you actually compute the full maxim values more accurately. Sort the resultant passages uh, by score, and you return the top key. That's how ranking works. So, how does uh, you know Colbert um, uh, uh, V two perform? So, so as to evaluate performance of Colbert V two, it was basically trained on MS Marco, and uh, they also perform uh, evaluation on uh, the validation set of MS Marco. But they also do zero shot evaluation on beer data set, and they actually uh, contribute a new data set called as Latte. Uh, you know, um, uh, so and they therefore perform zero shot evaluation on the latent data set as well. Okay, so uh, the beer benchmark is a very well established benchmark, just like MS Marco, a very well established benchmark. Beer benchmark actually comprises of these various data sets that you see here. They come from various domains, from Wikipedia, from uh, you know um, um, some PubMed kind of domains, and so on. Uh, some some of them are, are from Twitter as well in their senses. Uh, they have various licenses, various sizes that you can see, number of documents or passages, number of queries that you see there. Okay. Uh, Latte, uh, you know, uh, Latte, pronounced as Latte, is basically long tail cross domain retrieval evaluation benchmark. Here, uh, basically, they obtained the topics and passages from answer posts uh, across different Stack Exchange forums. In fact, they care about five different types of forums writing, recreation, science, technology, and lifestyle. Which comprise of several subtopics like ESL linguistics, world building, sci fi, chemistry, web apps, and so on. You can look at the subtopics here, right? They obtain the questions and the passages from these Stack Exchange forums. However, they actually don't just restrict themselves to forum queries, but they actually also get search queries. And the search queries are actually obtained from a GOO AQ dataset, which is basically Google's uh, search autocomplete queries dataset, which has been recently released. Okay. So how does Colbert V2 perform? Well, they compare, uh, they do two kinds of two kinds of evaluation across 28 different data sets. So, um, you know, uh, and three different benchmarks, right? So they do in-domain evaluation on MS Marco. They do out-of-domain evaluation on uh, beer as well as uh, Wikipedia open question answering uh, as well as, you know, the Latte uh, search and forum test queries. So, uh, so basically, they have in-domain evaluation on the left side, and then the middle and the right side basically are zero-shot evaluation. Okay. 
So they compare with many, many methods, uh, methods which are single vector density level methods as well as multi vector density level methods, methods which use distillation or some special pre training uh, versus those which don't really use any distillation or any special pre training. Okay. For MS Marco, they basically report MR MRR, a mean reciprocal rank at 10, recall at 10, uh, recall at 50, and recall at 1K. Uh, for beer uh, kind of tasks, they basically uh, you know, report NDCG at 10. For uh, out of domain Wikipedia, um, open question answering task and uh, the lot rate task, they basically report success at five. Success at five basically is uh, um, is, is computed uh, depending on whether the system was able to find an accepted or upvoted answer from the target stack uh, stack exchange page in the top five hits. Right. So, so what you can observe from the results, of course, you observe that uh, Colbert V2 is the best. So it basically leads to um, you know the best MRR at ten. Um, on both the official development set as well as the local evaluation set that was also used in Colbert, right? Compared to strong baselines like Colbert itself. Okay. Um, uh, they also you, you can also observe in out of uh, domain evaluation on most of the data sets, Colbert V2 basically leads to better results. Only on a few data sets, essentially you observe the displayed V2, uh, or sometimes you know um, sometimes there are other uh, models like uh, MODIR which can actually lead to better results. But overall, you know, on uh, uh, on a lot of those data sets, Colbert V2 actually leads to the best results. Overall, if you really compare uh, the index, the index basically was created using MS Marco data set, and on MS Marco, Colbert leads to 154 GB index, while on the other hand, Colbert uh, Colbert leads to 154 GB, while Colbert V2 leads to just 16 GB or 25 GB index, uh, depending on whether you do one or two bits per dimension. Overall, basically, Colbert leads to uh, you know Colbert V2 leads to 60, 6 to 6, 6 to 10x smaller indexes. Okay. In summary, in this video, I talked about Colbert V2 and in general multi-vector density retrieval. Colbert V2 sort of combines uh, denoise supervision, for, um, you know, uh, from from a um, from a cross encoder teacher, and also residual compression for smaller indexes, um, and therefore performs effective multi-vector density retrieval. Uh, this paper also introduced uh, LETE, uh, which is basically a natural information seeking queries kind of data set for long tail topics for zero shot retrieval evaluation. Uh, on MS Marco passage ranking, Colbert V2 achieves uh, MRR at 10, highest MRR at 10. And uh, on uh, zero shot evaluation, 22 out of 28 data sets, Colbert V2 basically got the best results, uh, where the next best retriever was 8% worse. Okay. Uh, the index created by Colbert V2 is 6 to 10x smaller compared to Colbert itself. Okay. Hope you liked the video. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage.